Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Scatha. You're watching one of our short episodes. We're going to be at you on Thursday with a long episode to deep dive, if you will, into the stories of this week. So with that being said, let's hit the headlines. So we're not quite at the point where you're going to be able to lock a Mr. Fusion to the back of your DeLorean, but there is a new fusion reactor set to light up before the end of this month. It's a Stellarator reactor called the W7X, and it's over at the Max Planck Institute in Germany. It took more than a million hours to build this thing, over 19 years to make it fully complete. 50 individual six-ton magnetic coils make up the cage that holds super hot gases, and they're cooled to minus 200 degrees Celsius. The machine itself is 19 meters wide and in the shape of a ring, and the position of the cage was specifically optimized by a supercomputer to pinpoint the best possible design for the machine itself. Traditionally, we've used nuclear fusion reactors called tokamaks, but the one issue with them is that they can only be used in short bursts, and any magnetic disruption can destabilize the reactor. Stellarators, like the W7X, are supposed to be designed to be impervious to those disruptions, so this could get interesting for the future of nuclear energy. Engineers are waiting for approval from Germany's nuclear regulators, but if all goes well, they want to flip this baby on by the end of November. Let's make some energy. Meanwhile, in Japan, a movie is being released with a robot co-star. The film is Sayonara, written and directed by Japanese filmmaker Koji Fukuda. It's the story of a Japan that has been decimated by radiation, and the main character, Tanya, gets a very low priority number for evacuation, meaning she has to stay behind and suffer radiation poisoning. But she's not alone. Her childhood companion, Leona, is there with her. But that's not CG or makeup you're seeing. Leona is actually Geminoid F, a real-life robot created by Hiroshi Ishiguro, whose robotics work you might be familiar with. He's the guy who made that robot that looks exactly like himself. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool. So back to Geminoid F. Since Geminoid F can't walk, the story gives her a knee injury and then sits her in a wheelchair for the length of the movie, where she can move around freely. It's interesting that she's treated like any other cast member on the film's website, and in the movie, it looks like she helps Tanya deal with her increasing radiation sickness. Hey, Bethesda, I think I just found the plot of Fallout 5. Too soon? All right, so very last story. I always like to ask, where's my Rosie the Robot? And honestly, Patin about a year ago said that they had one for us, but now there's actually a working prototype. The Patin showed off its skills at Tokyo Design Week last week, and to refresh your memory, it's a wheeled robot that's kind of like a Roomba, but it's built around adaptive AI that lets its owner choose what type of AI it should use and then place objects or attachments on top of it that Patin can work with. For example, if you were to place a lamp on the Patin, it would pinpoint where you are in the room, find the best location for the light source relative to your position, and then wheel the lamp over to that location. There are depth sensors, contact sensors, and other features on board powering the little robot, and it looks really, really fun. So here's the new stuff. Its designers announced they're going to make the Patin as an open source platform so devs and hobbyists alike can create their own features, apps, and attachments for it. There's still no word on pricing or availability, but Flower Robotics says they want to have this thing out and available for you in 2016. And I still want it to make me pancakes. Hey, guess what? It's Monday. Let's talk about crowdfunding. This sounds like a joke, but I assure you it's not. There is a robot band that has gone to Kickstarter to fund a lead singer. So I should probably start with the humans involved in this project. There are three guys named Frank, Marcus, and Stock, and they're artists who built three robots named Fingers, Stick Boy, and Bones. Those three robots comprise Compressor Head, a robot jam band of a sort. But the robots need a fourth, a lead vocalist, to sing and interact with fans, and they want to make a record that no human can perform. The robots can do specific musical actions humans just can't do live, like playing multiple riffs at the same time. They don't want a record label to interfere with their artistic goals because they're real musicians, man. So Kickstarter seemed like the way to go. Part of the project includes a MindLink web app that would notify users when the band comes alive and translate some of the robots' communications into human speech. Super weird, but so metal. Metal. Do you see what I did there? 
there are all kinds of pledge levels you can get in at, and they want over $300,000. So they've got a long way to go and about 25 days left to get there. So if you're interested in hearing a band uh, that is comprised entirely of robots, this would be your chance. All right, guys, let's look at your beautiful, beautiful photos. Our phone talker for the day is Taris, who wrote in and sent this picture that they took with their iPhone 6S, and they said, Hey guys, took this photo earlier last month on my iPhone 6S. I used Clarity from Camera Plus and Borders. Other than that, photo is untouched. This is a partial panorama photo as well. If you think the photo is showworthy, you have my permission to use it. Well, Tara's obviously it's show worthy because there it is right here on Tomorrow Daily. Thank you so much for sending in that amazing panorama. I just, oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, and if you guys want to send in your photography, uh, please feel free to do so. Email us tomorrow at CNET.com. Send in your photo. Give us a little story about it. Give us permission to use it on the show. And of course, tell us what device you took it on because uh, I find that pretty interesting. Uh, and also, you can find us online. We are TomorrowDaily.com if you'd like to share the show with a friend. We're Tomorrow Daily on all your favorite social media sites like Facebook and Twitter, and I'm at Ashley Escava on Twitter, and producer Logan is at Logan Moy. You can also find Jeff Kanata, our co-host, who'll be here tomorrow at Jeff Kanata with two N's and one T on Twitter. Uh, that is it for the show today. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new docket of wonderful science fact, meeting science fiction, blowing up in your face, getting all great and stuff. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>